Tonight, before we begin the meeting, just we had a tragic accident last Friday. Uh, remember, a, a new reporter passed away, got hit by a car up in Story Ave. Donald Shampoo, you know, graduate of Newport High School. So, just have a moment of silence for him, please. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the roll call for the city council meeting 2017. Councilor Devlin is absent. Councilor Earls. Present. Councilor Eigman. Here. Councilor Junta. Present. Councilor Tonta. Present. Councilor Vogel. Present. Councilor Z. Present. Councilor Cameron. Here. Councilor Connell. Present. Councilor Cronin. Present. Council President O'Brien. Here. They file items? There is uh, the mayor's update as always, and uh, the councilors will see on their desk there is a marijuana mar moratorium order 68A, which will replace the existing 68 in the packet. That's the only late file. Motion to accept the late file items. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment. Peter Goldberg. I'm here to talk about the road conditions in the Squires Glen neighborhood. Um, my name is Peter Goldberg, 19 Pheasant Run Drive. Um, first of all, the trenches that are crossing on every one of the Squires Glen roadways have settled. Some of these have just recently been patched over by the city. Second, the manholes and catch basins are displaced and will need frames and covers removed and reset to the proper grade. Many of these are receding into the pavement causing cracks and holes. These are getting worse over time. Third, the culverts and overall drainage needs to be remedied. The worst one crosses Wildwood Drive. We have the famous three brump roller coaster caused by pipes rising to the surface of the road. You can come by and see and try it for yourself. We don't charge money for that. <laughs> these are grading issues where water collects on the streets. There are grading issues, and these freeze in the winter months. This is a safety issue. I broke a couple of ribs walking the dog because I didn't see the ice under a fresh dusting of snow. All these problem areas are causing the road infrastructure to degrade in an exponential rate as time goes by. Within the last several years, this has become very noticeable and is the reason why I submitted the petition to fix and repave the roads in the Squire Glen neighborhood. Every single household, with the exception of several homes that were vacant, have been represented in this petition. It is worth mentioning that certain areas of our sidewalks are in bad shape. Children can't ride their bicycles on these areas because the roots of the trees have made these areas impassable. In addition, it is quite difficult to clear snow in these areas. I am sure that clearing snow is an issue also on the streets as it's becoming more difficult. I noticed that the $300,000 mentioned for road repairs covers other neighborhoods besides Squires Glen and some of the streets in the Squires Glen were not listed in those streets that might see repairs. This is concerning to me as there are quite a few trouble spots in both Fox Run and Pheasant Run drives. The petition as submitted includes all of the streets in the Squires Glen neighborhood. I am hoping that there might be other funds that might cover the roads not listed. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Benjamin Hi, uh, I'm Rabbi Benjamin Resnick. I live at 19 Otis Place. I'm here on behalf of the Synagogue of Asachim at 53 and a half Washington Place. Um, I'm here about a permit uh, to install a Hanukkah menorah in Market Square. We've done it uh, every year for the past several years. Uh, it's something 
um, everyone in our community, uh, and I think in the wider Newburyport community, looks really looks forward to. Uh, last year we had a, a great interfaith event uh, with I think close to 200 people. Uh, that won't happen again this year, unfortunately, because Hanukkah and Christmas Eve do not coincide this year, but they did last year and it was wonderful. Um, so we'd like to install it again. We install it for uh, eight day uh, for Hanukkah lasts eight days, though. We'd like to get it up a few days early. It starts on December 12th and ends eight days after that. And so we'll probably leave it around, leave it up through the end of the month of December and then take it down. Um, the only issue that I'm aware of, I'm here to answer any questions you have, the only issue I'm aware of is that based on some of your procedural issues, there's a chance that <coughs> the permit couldn't formally be approved until Tuesday, December 12th, which is the morning before the night that we need it. We'd ideally like to install it like that Sunday before, like the 10th or the 11th, just have a few days lead time. So if that's possible, we'd really appreciate it. And uh, happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Have the mayor's comment. Good evening, members of the city council, President O'Brien, members of the public, I would like to invite uh, Two members of uh, member of our police department and a member of our uh, fire department to come with me at the mic, and I would like to invite all of the departments in to line up around us, please. Keith, right here. Thank you. Right here. came to be here for this, so come on. How you doing? Huh? We'll wait. And we don't have to have police on one side and fire on the other, <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> we can integrate. <laughs> well, here? Okay, wonderful. Tonight, I have the pleasure of recognizing two extraordinary individuals who gave a tremendous amount of time to our city and have retired. And uh, I know that individually within the departments, you've had an opportunity to thank these amazing gentlemen for their work, but we haven't had a chance as a city to recognize their great accomplishments and work that they gave to the city. So first, uh, I'd like to read this uh, certificate of accommodation for uh, James McDonald. The City of Newburyport Certification of Accommodation is hereby awarded to James E. McDonald. It is my honor as Mayor of the City of Newburyport to extend to you our best wishes and sincere appreciation for your dedication and commitment to the City of Newburyport for your 35 years of loyal service. We wish you must much health and happiness in your retirement given under my hand and seal this 27th day of November in the year 2017. Congratulations. The City of Newburyport Certification of Accommodation is hereby awarded to Keith Carter. It is my honor as Mayor of the City of Newburyport to extend to you best wishes and sincere appreciation for your dedication and commitment to the City of Newburyport and the Newburyport Police Department for your 30 years of loyal service. We wish you much health and happiness in your retirement given under my hand and seal this 27th day of November in the year 2017. Donna D. Holiday, Mayor. Thank you. Um, 
much. I appreciate everybody here today and your service as city councils and mayors and the community here. That's where it's all started for me, uh, right here, this very day, March uh, 16th, 1987, uh, being in this room. Um, I just want to thank the, the, the opportunity of um, being a, a pleasure to work in the city of New Report. I absolutely loved it. Um, still do. Um, that's after 30 years. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to leave on a good note because I think sometimes. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no. No, what I'm saying is what were you playing? I'm fine and after 30 years. Did it's you like some this? people has been here too long. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll say, okay? Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to uh, show my appreciation. I miss the community. That was, that's, I think, um, after seeing and uh, looking at their uh, YouTube when I retired, it, I was really touched. I didn't realize people uh, were still around to know what I did for the community and the opportunity of, um, you know, of the department sending me these different trainings and to tweak it to best of my knowledge to help the, the kids of the city of New Report and the public and the elderly, and I always thought of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I appreciate it heavily. Um, same thing with Keith. Um, my ride started back here July 1st, 1982. Um, Dick Sullivan appointed me. Um, by far one of the best days of my life. Um, I love the city. was born and brought up here. Loved working here. Um, loved protecting the people in it. Um, taking care of them, whatever they needed. Um, to my brothers and sisters, um, the greatest group of people, and even my blue brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been all over the country in my career. And... Um, this place right here, you got the, the greatest group of police and fire ever um, out of any place I've ever been. Um, just great. I can't say enough about you all. And um, thank you very much. I got 32 years, so I should get one pretty soon. updates. Uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I'm happy to say those of you who missed the awesome game I knew that those Ame Amesbury uh, uh, Indians could not play on turf and sure enough once again we beat them 27 to 0. So uh, having lost last year and having to uh, honor my bet with uh, Mayor Gray we uh, redid our bet. He's doing three hours of community service in Newburyport and uh, we'll be probably ringing South Salvation Army bells and Market Square and collecting toys for tots uh, sometime over the next several weeks. I'll let you know when that is. And Mayor Gray will be wearing a Newburyport cap. Um, during halftime, uh, we had the honor of also recognizing a, another uh, amazing individual in our city. Uh, we dedicated a plaque and a cherry tree to Coach Ed Gariano. Our city council president was at hand for the uh, unveiling. Uh, Ed served 29 years as the Newburyport High School's head football coach and has an outstanding career record, which you can read in my update. It was a really nice event, and Coach Jim Stalen was also there, which was nice. 
I would like to also recognize the staff uh, from the Salvation Army, the Lions Club, the Rotary, Anna Jake's Hospital that cooked the turkeys, and the many, many, many volunteers who helped provide a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner uh, at, um, around 12.30 on Thanksgiving Day for, uh, at the Senior Community Center. It was the best turnout we've had to date. And then, of course, on Sunday was our annual Santa uh, parade, and Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus arrived by the Coast Guard boat. And uh, thanks to the Coast Guard and Triton and Newburyport High School bands who uh, led the parade and escorted Santa into Market Square, where uh, we lit the Christmas tree. And also a big thanks to our DPS staff who do a wonderful job getting the tree and Market Square uh, ready, as well as the chamber with all of their decorations. Moving on to schools, as uh, you all know, tomorrow night uh, is our annual meeting per the city charter for the joint meeting of the school committee and city council to look at the uh, finances and our forecasting for the upcoming fiscal year as we begin to look at preparing the <coughs> FY19 budget. Uh, dinner will be served at 6 and the meeting will start promptly at 6.30. The superintendent search committee is finalized with 17 members to be chaired by Cheryl Sweeney uh, with Bruce Menon representing the school committee and Barry Connell representing the city council. The search committee has also been established by the superintendent for the new high school principal and the goal is to have both of these positions ready to go on July 1 of next year. Uh, as many of you know, the, there's been a uh, very strong parent advocacy group for Start School Later. Uh, we've had ad hoc groups, we had the schools present information to us from each of the schools from their perspective about moving to a later start time. Um, but we are missing two key positions in order to implement this, the superintendent and the principal of the high school. So we would like to push it out another year and there still are a tremendous amount of issues regarding this type of move. Uh, we all recognize that the research really indicates that uh, teenagers need to be sleeping a little bit later. So I think there is a strong commitment to make this happen. It's just trying to operationalize this with all of the moving parts and there are many. Maskonomic is really actively looking at this also and has put together a very strong website on this issue and would encourage you to go and seek out additional information if you are interested. Uh, parking garage bids. So we ran into a bit of a glitch. Uh, our owner's project manager, Harry, is um, directed us in a very conservative manner uh, telling us that because the project is over $10 million that we would have to pre-qualify all of the general contractors. Well, it turns out we started to receive some inquiries into this because uh, if you remove the subs from the general, there's potential that these bids could come in under $10 million so that the uh, bid process could be wider, which is important because I think we'll get more competitive bids. So we had a conversation with the Attorney General's office just to double check, and in fact, that is the case. So the notice went into the Central Register last week, and we're hoping, we've run into a couple problems with the bid docs, but we hope to have them uploaded into Project Dog uh, by tomorrow. Uh, bids will then be due towards the end of December, and uh, we'll let you know how that process unfolds. Uh, NED uh, has completed the Abutter uh, videos in uh, terms of assessing the you know, structural issues of their property. The garage, um, the site for the garage should start demolition <coughs> on Monday. I will let you know if any of that changes. The next uh, IAG, the Intermodal Advisory Group meeting is Thursday night at seven o'clock upstairs in the Mayor's Conference Room. Uh, we also had a follow-up meeting today uh, with uh, the abutter who has filed uh, action against the city on uh, the garage, and it was a very productive meeting, and I believe that we are moving this process uh, forward successfully. Uh, certainly, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, again, you heard about the traffic fatali uh, fatality uh, at Story Ave, and again, this is under the jurisdiction of the DA so that we don't have uh, detailed information at this juncture, but I certainly will share that information with you once we have additional details. 
Uh, Alice training is the new training for active shooters that has been occurring across the country and given the nature of these types of incidents and in public buildings, the uh, staff have requested this training and we have started providing it in each of the city buildings with very good feedback. Just a couple uh, updates that are coming up. <clears throat> On Thursday, November 30th at 7.30 at the Masonic Hall, the Secretary, new Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Rosalina Costa, will be here <coughs> to talk about uh, workforce labor issues. That same day at 11 o'clock at Northern Essex, the Merrimack Valley, uh, Merrimack Valley um, uh, planning, uh, is holding a comprehensive economic development strategy meeting featuring Secretary Stephanie Pollack. Um, and certainly all of you are invited to both of those um, meetings. And um, any, if no further questions, I will. Council Z. I just have a couple quick questions. On the, um, on the bids on the parking garage, is our pre qualification my understanding is pre-qualifications are optional at the city's discretion if the project's over $100,000 but less than 10 million. So was the complaint, what was the nature of the complaint? Maybe you could just help me understand what did the AG's office tell us that? That we in fact, because it was not firm over $10 million project that we could in fact not pre-qualify all okay. the GCs. And so that's the direction we wanted to go, Councillor, because we felt that we would get a broader uh, range of bids, which would be more favorable mm. to the city. Okay, I understand. And the second question is on the legal case. Um, I know that there, there's a lot of, um, with, the, with all the abutters, there's a lot of discussion through the IAG and so forth and the plans for the, the sort of mitigations in the back. Mm -hmm. Does this case have any impact on the other abutters in order to accommodate this abutter? No, I think that we can make both of um, both this particular abutter and the other abutter, I'm sure we can make um, it compatible in terms of what they're requesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to the consent agenda. <clears throat> the consent agenda that consists this evening of the approval of minutes for the November 13th meeting. There's one transfer, transfer 48, free cash, $47,000 for a tractor purchase, same amount, that would go to budget and finance. Three communications, communication uh, 120, Council Aziz's memo regarding special events, that's to go to public safety. Communication 121, which is an application by State Automotive Repair for a Class II vehicle license to go to license and permits. Communication 122 is a mobility small cell utility petition. That's to go to public utilities. There are uh, more than a few appointments. Appointment number uh, 68, Joe Lamb, 14 Russia Street, uh, CPC until 1120. Joe Setterquist, two Whiteman Road, Assistant Harbor Master, Special Police Officer until 12-31-20. It's in Wilmington. Appointment 70, Paul O'Brien, 483 Merrimack Street, Chief CPO, Chief Procurement Officer. Um, Reappointments, Jill Brennan, 24 Webster Street, Haverhill, Assessor, 1121. Uh, Peter Burnett, 255 Main Street, Building Commissioner, 1121. Appointment 73, Jane Healy, 38 Winter Street, CPC until 1120. David Zink, 6 Laurel Road, Electrical Inspector, 1119. Virginia Champy, 84 Purchase Street, Emma Andrews, 103018. Anya G. Elrod, 43 Purchase Street, Emma Andrews, 103018. Elizabeth Valeriani, 29 Oak Street, Emma Andrews, 103018. 18, Elizabeth Watson, 53 Warren Street, Unit 315, Emma Andrews, 1030, 18. Kevin Wallace, 40 Oak Street, Fruit Street Commission, 113020. 20. Enrico Caruso, 34 Russell Hill, Russet Hill, Road in Haverhill, Assistant Harbor Master, Master Special Police Officer. The next 10 are Assistant Harbor Master Special Police Officer until 123120. And they all end at 1231.20, following up. Francis Chasen, 300 Merrimack Street. Michael Chasen, 46 Lake Attitash Road, Amesbury. Richard Cummings, 7 Jewett Street, Georgetown. Joe Grande, 52 Linwood Ave, Methuen. Adam Hayden, 76 Longfellow Drive. James Moranto, 167 Harper Ridge Road, East Hampstead, New Hampshire. Robert Padalero, 1756 Street. 
Richard uh, Popolo, 169 Apache Way, Tewksbury. Daniel Scott, Haverhill. Mm -hmm. uh, Philip Stern, 271 Merrimack Street, Unit 2. David Willey, maybe Wiley, 13 Devonshire Crossing, Lowell. Christian Zoller, 115 Timber Swamp Road, Hampton. Tracy Maynard, uh, 69 Middle Street, New Report, Human Resources Director until 1121. Kathleen Carey, 2 Chapel Street, Library Board of Directors, 1124. Marsha Edson, 11 Salem Street, Library Board of Directors, 1124. And lastly, Elizabeth Valeriani, 29 Oak Street, Library Board of Directors, 1124. <coughs> That is the consent agenda this evening. Motion to approve with the, if we could leave it to the clerk to fill in that missing address on the, for Haverhill, Daniel, uh, appointment 089 Second. on the record. Thank Second. you. Second. Discussion? Okay. Uh, Discussion, Council Vogel. Thank you. Um, if I may um, direct the clerk, the um, application for automobile repair is incomplete. There's no um, insurance information provided. So noted. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? One to the regular agenda. Any motion for the May's update? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Go ahead. Go to communication. First communication is communication 123, which uh, we heard about at public comment. It's uh, a letter from Rabbi Resnick. It says, as in the years past, uh, Congregation Ahabiz Akim request a permit to install a Hanukkah Hanukkah uh, menorah, excuse me, in Market Square adjacent to the Christmas tree. We plan to set up on Sunday, December 10th. We'll leave the menorah in place through the, through the then of the month, must be the 10th of the month. We will um, need access to an electrical outlet, but we'll handle all of the setup directly. Thank you very much. Rabbi Resnick. M motion, to motion to suspend the rules, take them one reading. Thank you, Second. Emergency we need an emergency preamble. I actually have an emergency preamble just here if you in, want. In my yeah. pocket. Really? Wow. Go ahead. But, and, and by the way, just <laughs> is that a compliment? When we discuss. Um, pursuant to Charter 29B uh, and further defined in 17, subsection 7, an emergency exists due to the fact that the matter referenced in Communication 123, that is the menorah which has been requested in Market Square, is time sensitive and should be completed before the next council meeting on December 11, 2017. Therefore, the council hereby affirmatively declares that an emergency exists such that it may be voted upon at its first introduction, submitted Councillor Tontar. Okay. Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Do you need a roll call? I do. Yes. Uh, Councillor Devlin is still absent. Councillor Earls. Yes. Councillor Eigerman. Yes. Councillor Junta. Yes. Councillor Tontar. Yes. Councillor Vogel. Yes. Councillor Z. Yes. Councillor Cameron. Yes. Councillor Connell. No. Councillor Cronin. Yes. Councillor O'Brien. Yes. Motion Emergency. to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councillor Earls? Uh, when the rabbi spoke, um, I believe the intention was to leave it through the end of the month, not to the 10th of the month. So reading that, I would say that uh, that would leave in place through the end of the month. We're setting it up on Sunday the 10th. Correct. A, a but, Scrivener's but when the clerk read it, oh, correct. leave the menorah in place, you interpret it as saying the 10th of the I, month, it I, was the I end mean, of the month. Correct. I misinterpreted it. I will make the correction. The end of the month. Okay. Right. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. One no. Council Connell. Okay. Move on. Appointments, there are none. Orders. Orders. First order is order number 66. City Council of the City of New Report approves the following licensed contractor for 2017 water, sewer, drain, layer, roadway, and sidewalk. Rafay Construction Corp. 21 Elm Place, Swampskit, Mass. Submitted, Councilor Eigenman. Motion to refer to public utilities. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Next would be next would be order number sixty-seven, yep. um, which is submitted jointly. The councilors Connell, Zeed, and Argerman, which uh, in essence seeks approval for a 
city solicitor to assist with the city council as it identifies, engages, and retains a qualified attorney and counselor at law, courts of Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to act as special counsel to the city council regarding the Waterfront West project with an initial retainer fee of not less than $25,000. If the uh, president would like, I could read the whole thing. Motion to refer to planning development. Second. Point of order, if I may, for the record show that I'm going to recuse myself from this conversation. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Go to planning development. This, this is the new guy. Order 68. Order 68 has been replaced by Order 68A, which is the late file. Uh, it's entitled Recreational Marijuana Moratorium Order. It's submitted by Councilor Tontar. Um, I think the pertinent part is that uh, the City Council would adopt a temporary moratorium on the use of land or structures for a recreational marijuana establishment or other uses related thereto. The moratorium shall be in effect through December 31st, 2018. During that period, the city shall undertake a planning process to address the potential impacts of recreational marijuana in the city and to consider the uh, Cannabis Control Commission regulations at the state level regarding the recreational marijuana establishment shall consider adopting new zoning ordinance in uh, response to these issues or take any other action relative thereto. Motion to refer planning and development. Second. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. One no. The one com committee items. Budget and finance. Motion to remove transfer 44, free cash 20,000 to high school roof repairs. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve? Second. Second. Uh, Mr. President, we received uh, testimony uh, on this uh, in committee and voted 2-0 uh, in committee to approve. Um, the flashing has uh, blown off on the, on the uh, high school. Uh, there is the danger of further water infiltration. Um, so this uh, $20,000 is a patch to repair it. Uh, the, the city will, has, has applied uh, for a grant for the Mass uh, uh, School Building Authority, uh, and this is going to hold us over until we hopefully get that grant. Councilor Zee. I just wanted to add, I attended the committee meeting, and one of the questions that I asked that was important to me was, first thing, are we throwing good money after bad? And the answer that we were given was no. This is uh, worth the expenditure. And second important question was, if we spend this 20000 and we don't make it, into the MSBA program next year, which is questionable or, or nobody knows until you know, would we be good with this repair to wait another year for another cycle? And the answer was yes, at, at least based on the information available today. So I, I, um, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that just in case uh, we don't get in and certainly we, we won't know until I believe that was told the spring is the cycle and then the following spring again if we don't make it. Uh, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Motion to remove transfer 45, free cash 35,000 to rail trail phase two Second. capital project. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, motion to approve? Second. Discussion? Um, the context? Uh, you know, we, we covered this, the PCBs were found along that section of the uh, rail trail. Um, they have to be um, remediated and cleaned up. The city does have a Bronzefields grant. Uh, this money will be used uh, in order to prepare and do the assessment for, the, for that removal. Uh, we don't have any choice. They have to be removed. I just wanted to add to, to um, because it's mostly in my ward. Um, one is this is expected, at least at this point, to be the final request on the rail trail, although you, you, know, you never say never until it's done. Um, the 
Uh, all of the soil testing has been completed, uh, just to use this as a brief moment to update folks on the rail trail. So now we're waiting on basically approval of the remediation plan from the regulatory agencies. The remediation itself actually will take far less time than it has taken to get to this point uh, to put together the testing plan and so forth. And as of uh, the most recent update I received from the planning office, still looking at substantial completion in the spring. So the project won't be 100% done, but it'll, it'll be you know, most of the way there, and then there'll be little things that are left over for the contractor uh, to finish up. So hopefully we'll be enjoying it sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to remove transfer 46. Free cash, $373,762 to general fund budget reserve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve. Second. Second. Um, this transfer of 373000 will allow the city to uh, increase the tax rate by one and three quarter percent rather than uh, two and a half percent that is allowable by law and also we had budgeted for. So uh, we have about two and a half million dollars certified in free cash. Uh, this would take it down approximately 400000 uh, I would note that um, in the budgeting process, we had uh, estimated that there would be about $550,000 in uh, new growth. Uh, and we now, from the information that's come in, uh, estimate that that would be 933000 So the, a higher estimate on new growth um, will allow you know, the possibility that we'll have more income coming in, probability, uh, and therefore uh, that this uh, lowering the tax rate is something that is advisable. The committee was voted 2-0 to lower the tax rate, or lower the increase in the lower tax the rate. Increase. Sorry about that. <laughs> Second derivative. Yeah, I just, I just wonder if uh, it would be appropriate to take these together with order 62 and 63, they, mm -hmm. they all seem to be of a piece. I think we have to do this first, though, don't we? I, I refer to the city clerk on this. I'm My understanding from talking to the finance director today is that uh, we should do transfer 46 first because that would affect uh, whether we can actually set the rate at the rate we wish to set it at, correct? I, I guess what I was getting at is not <coughs> the order of the voting, but whether we can discuss everything all together just to save time. That's all. It's up to the president. Yeah. Okay. Well, we already right. I'm to the council. They want to do it. I'll we'll make a motion. <laughs> motion to remove those as well. Yeah. So moved. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the committee. Well, now we're we're discussing um, order sixty three, um, and uh, sixty two. And uh, in committee, we, uh, we recommended um, setting a residential factor at one, which would keep the uh, tax rate the same for residential and commercial, industrial, and um, personal property. Uh, and then on Order 63, we recommended that the tax rate be set at $13.26. Uh, which is consistent with uh, increasing the tax rate uh, over the levy by one three quarters percent rather than two and a half percent. Discussion? I just wanted to rise in support. Um, I, I think a, a, a flat tax rate at the moment continues to make sense. I know we, we have this discussion every year, but it's, a, it's an important one. Um, and I, I appreciate the, the one and three quarters effort. Of course, uh, the average, actual average tax increase will, will be more as it typically is because the valuation changes, but um, it's a positive thing and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. We have to approve uh, transfer 46 first. Correct. Before we set the tax rate. Motion to approve is on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No motion to approve. Uh, Auto 62 residential factor at one. So move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The audit set the tax rate for FY 2018 at $13.26. So, so move. move. So move. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't need a roll call for a tax rate. Be nice to have a roll call to set the tax rate, I think. Mr. President, is that all right with you? 
Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Tax rate for fiscal year 2018 will be $13.26 for all classes of property. Councillor Earls. Yes. Councillor Eigen. Yes. Councillor Junta. Yes. Councillor Tontar. Yes. Councillor Vogel. Yes. Councillor Z. Yes. Councillor Cameron. Yes. Councillor Connell. Yes. Councillor Cronin. Yes. Council President O'Brien. Yes. Motion to remove transfer 47, free cash 300,000 to roadway reconstruction program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold. Uh, mo sorry, which one is that? Motion to approve. What number? Um, in committee, we um, uh, recommend Seven. approval, two to nothing. Uh, and in committee, we, we received uh, considerable uh, commentary from the public. Uh, especially in Squires Glen uh, neighborhood uh, regarding the condition of uh, roads uh, there. Um, we had some discussion uh, over um, whether or not we could find more money uh, to do the roads. Uh, I think in committee we're very much cognizant of the road and infrastructure needs in the city. Um, and if we could get more money to do it, it would be wonderful. But recommend approval of 300 grand. Thank you. Council seat. Keep it going here. So <laughs> I wanted to rise in strong support of this. Um, I'm always happy to see any, any money go towards road paving. But actually, the part that uh, makes me the happiest is the uh, comments in the memo about potentially making this an annual allocation. Uh, I'm sure my colleagues will remember our uh, spirited debate about a capital line item several months ago, something that we went back and forth on especially my, my good friend from Ward 4. And this is exactly what I think is the right way to do it, is to have it always be in the budget. Um, and that way, you know, while that, uh, that, that was basically exactly the same thing as this, and I would be very thrilled to see it every year, 200 would be a phenomenal start. Uh, we have essentially infinite amount of work to do with respect to roads and sidewalks. So knowing year after year that there will be some funding and hopefully over time, we can actually use time to our benefit uh, or to our value, whereas uh, you know, in other cases, it, it's, uh, things are always going up. But in this case, this would be a great thing to go up every year so that we can slowly build this up and uh, over a long period of time. So I'm excited about uh, this. I'm, I'm apologetic to some of the residents. I know we can't get every street. We, we've, you know, in my ward, I, I have a long list too. But uh, this is the way forward, and uh, I'm, I'm most excited about that comment. So I hope to see it in FY19. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> Councilman? Yeah, I just had a question. I, I don't know whether it's directed to the auditor, Ethan Manning, or, or to the uh, budget and finance chair. But so the all we're approving with the transfer is the is the lump sum. So the the memorandum where the eight roads for spot repair are listed, that's informational, right? That we're not voting on that. So that that's hasn't been determined yet. That's right. Okay. And he's nodding his head. Okay, thank you. Councilor Johnson. I also uh, rise in support of this, and, and it's mainly um, I, I love to see infrastructure worked on. This is a great idea, and that in the uh, top eight here, four of them happen to be in my ward, and they happen to be in the uh, in neighborhoods that are in dire need of repair. So um, I am very happy to see this. I'm also happy to see two streets on here that happen to be in the West End. Happen to be in Ward Six, um, but then again, right, right on, right over the line from Ward Five. But again, two other roads that are in desperate need of repair. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion to remove uh, communication one seventeen, a uh, letter from the Moral Foundation uh, and funding directors. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve. Second. Um, budget and finance also um, recommended 2-0 um, for your approval. Uh, and this is annually the Moral Foundation um, uh, provides a gift to the city. They met with the uh, parks director, uh, Lisa Reed, uh, and discussed uh, the allocation of those funds across uh, city parks. Um, and we are very grateful for the uh, for the gift. Just just a point of order. So, 
is this the, considered the gift acceptance or will there be a separate, because typically we accept gifts by order of the city council. Will, will we draft one that says we accept the 102 or no, we just this use this letter in its place essentially? Because this, this is a communication. I, I didn't know. If right. Yeah, this is what we've done in the past. So is it? I'm going to nod. Historically, this is just done the gift. This is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Roll call then? Roll called on the approval of communication 117. Councilor Earls? Yes. Councilor Eigen? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Tonta? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Zed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor Bryan? Yes. Probably mm -hmm. should say for the people at home and people here that the money is going to Bartlett Mall Historic Restoration, 25000 Newport High School Outdoor Learning Center, 25000 Joppa Park Walkway Beautification, 20,000, Acts and Common Historical Landscape Preservation, 18,700, Acts and Common Lily Pond Renovation, 11,700, Atwood Park Interpretive Panel, 1,600. Anything else? Yeah, motion to remove uh, Order 64, uh, New Ray Port, Port Parks Conservancy Gift Acceptance. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve. Um, once again, we're recommended uh, approval uh, to zero. Uh, th these are funds uh, earned, by, uh, earned uh, received uh, by the Parks Conservancy, given um, for, to the city as a gift, uh, and they're going to they will be allocated to the beautification at Cushing Park, Atwood Park, and building dugouts at the Richie Eaton baseball field. Council Agamem. Um, this is great. You know, I mean, free money. Um, but is this all of the money that they took this year, or what? Is this one out of many? <laughs> I'd refer to the. That is the only donation received by the city so far in fiscal 18. For the Parks and Service. That's correct. If there are future donations, they'll they'll come before the body. Thank you. Do you happen to have the balance of the revolving fund, the parks revolving fund, off, off in your folder there? If not, it's all right. In your magic folder. Um, I do not have it. I'd be oh. happy to pull oh. it for you, though. Thank you. Councilor Junto. I, I had uh, asked in committee if we knew where these donations came from. Do, have, we, have we run down that information yet or no? Um, not yet. The, the Parks Conservancy, from what I understand, op operates as a sub-entity of the Moral Foundation, um, which is a, a, a 401c3. Um, 501c3. Yeah. You know what I meant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so we don't have uh, easy access to that information, but we'd be happy to try and request it through them again. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Roll call, please. So roll call on order number 64, accepting uh, $1,689.77 for Cushing Park, Atwood Park, and building dugouts at Richie Eaton. Councilor Earls? Yes. Councilor Eigenman? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Tonta? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Council President O'Brien? Yes. Motion to remove uh, Order 65, Senior Tax Work-Off Income Limit. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, once again, committee recommends uh, approval uh, to zero. Uh, the current income uh, uh, limit is 67846 which is the median household income in Massachusetts. The recommendation is to change that, which legally we can do uh, by statute. Uh, to the median household uh, income for Newburyport, which is $85,556, uh, according to uh, census data. That would, of course, uh, allow more people to qualify for the program, volunteer, uh, and receive a $1,500 reduction in property taxes. Council Z. Um, question for uh, finance director. Are, are these amounts uh, uh, treated as abatements in the end, essentially, or uh, is that how it works? Uh, in other words, 
similar to the discussion we're having with 41 C and a half, the, the, the monies that are saved by folks who take advantage of this program gets redistributed to the remaining tax base, correct? It doesn't affect the levy limit. The levy limit doesn't come down as a result of this. It, it, no, correct. It so you factor it, you, you, you will update your abatement Exactly. So it will. comes out of that bottom line in the budget, the allowance for abatements and exemptions. And just like last time, how many people are taking advantage of this today? Do, do you About know? 40? 42. 42. Okay. And we don't have any estimate on how many more might be able to do it because of the, the increase in the um, limit. Mm. I do not believe so. It's hard to yeah. tell. Yeah, without knowing income. What, but what there's no ceiling to how many people can. Anybody who qualifies under the, the Yep, and it's the average household income, so whoever would be within that okay. that limit and is over six, 60 years old could could um, fill out an application. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Council Agerman? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to vote for this, uh, but uh, I have a little bit of concern because you know the, the community is wealthier than, than the median for Massachusetts, so I suppose the difference between 80-odd thousand, 60-odd thousand is, is not that big a deal, and we, we, we want to encourage volunteerism, but, I mean, there will come a point and say our median income was $200,000. I mean, I don't think we would vote for that. So I, I just want to note that, you know, in this instance, I'm going to vote for it, but the, the trend is a little troublesome, and it's definitely something that's come up on uh, the other item, which isn't coming out tonight, which is clause uh, 41 C and a half, and that it doesn't also account for an asset. Mm. Uh, it doesn't talk about your net worth. And you know, when people get older, they typically take less salary, but they could have a huge amount of assets. Again, I'm not going to make a, a, a no vote on this one, but for the record, I just want to sound the warning mm -hmm. that it isn't necessarily a, a progressive uh, tax. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Is that it? That's it. Join it. Our next meeting is December 4th, 5.30 at the Senior, Senior Center, if people would like to uh, join us. 5.30. License and permits? Nothing tonight. Neighborhood and City Services? Nothing tonight. Planning and Development? Uh, Mr. President, there's a number of items. Uh, I'd like to remove from committee communication 23, zoning changes to Waterfront West. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both? Uh, Mr. President, uh, motion to uh, receive and file. Second. In discussion? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the committee met on, well, this has been in committee for quite a long time, so there have been informal discussions uh, between our committee, uh, I believe that we're also posted as a council of the whole mm -hmm. with the planning board with uh, New England development and looking at potential zoning changes to Waterfront West. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of at a status quo point right now and this will need to be resumed in the next council. So we decided to receive and file it just to clear it off our docket. Council Vogel. May the record show that I recuse myself. Please. Council Cronin recuse himself. Any more discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next. Uh, motion to remove item. Uh, let's, let's, let's do the. Well, I'll, I'll just continue in order. Um, to remove collectively um, communication 30. And communication 119. Second. I'm accused on this one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Both? Go ahead. Uh, motion to receive and file collectively. Second. Could you say what they are, please? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Um, so, uh, so these are, again, these are two communications. These relate to the 1690 house and the toll project. Um, these were discussed in committee uh, last week. Um, Councillor Connell and I vo both voted yes to receive and file these two communications. Um, and I'll kind of fold in. There are two orders that I'm about to bring out of committee. 
Uh, but basically, you know, as, as people recall, uh, the planning director also is at a training tonight, so he's not able to, to be here. But I know we have people from the Newburyport Preservation Trust and also the attorney representing uh, Berkeley Investments. Um, so, so, you know, in a nutshell, this was an approved project back in 2007. Uh, when the economy went south, it was basically on hold for quite a while. Um, Berkeley Investments is the developer for First Republic, um, which owns the toll building and the property. Um, when the 1690 house was uh, redone, there was damage. Well, you know, there, there were mistakes certainly made. Uh, I won't use any, uh, any subjective language, but uh, mistakes made certainly on the interior uh, that um, are, are not going to be able to be um, brought back and some exterior damage, I also believe, uh, was done there. So I know we've all gotten lots of um, communication uh, over time between, you know, the developer, um, the planning board, our historical um, commission, and the preservation trust about, you know, what has gone on there. And so whatever's, whatever happened, happened. Um, but the solution that, that there's general agreement on between the developers and the planning board and uh, Newburyport's Historical Commission and the Preservation Trust is generally um, in agreement with this is in order to allow um, the issuance of occupancy permits um, that there be a preservation restriction on the 1690 house um, and that has uh, been ag agreed to at this point and also a preservation restriction on the toll building facade so like a, a four side um, uh, preservation restriction. So the um, the developer um, Eric uh, Eckberg, perhaps his name is, uh, was was at our meeting on the 21st. And um, you know, again, the preservation restriction on the toll um, building is is in the process of being drafted. That uh, and on the 1690 house, that has already been agreed to, and I believe that has been recorded or it's about to be recorded. Um, so for the toll building, again, that's, uh, that's certainly got historic uh, significance as well, um, but they're going to work on that. That would have to go back, I believe, at least to the, um, you know, would get recorded with the state. That, that's our preference, and it would be a state-approved preservation restriction. And again, the developer is um, uh, accepting of this and then would come back to the city for an approval, I think, by the um, report historical commission, maybe that's also with the planning board. And then when that is done, then, then um, a number of occupancy permits would be released. So certainly there's leverage on the side of the city. Um, and again, having a, a state approved preservation restriction is seen as important because that's permanent and that, that won't be, uh, that'll, that'll have the impact that we're looking for. So all that to say, the, the letters, uh, there was one from quite a while ago and a more recent one, uh, we want to receive and file those, and we can talk about the orders uh, in a second. Further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, was that on all of them? That was on no, the, the two, just two communications. The communications. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dirty communication 119. And uh, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, do two separate votes on the, uh, so I'll make a motion to okay. uh, remove, let's see here, item. Uh, okay. Order 59, that's the order authorizing acceptance of the Simeon Moore 1690 house. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, if you bear with me for a second. So again, this preservation mm -hmm. recently approved. Uh, motion to approve. Second. No. no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is 59? Yeah. This is order 59. 59. Order 59. 59. I don't have to. Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah, it's, I got it. it should be in there. Thank you. Um, so we do want to, on the floor, I'd like to make a, a, a minor amendment to add uh, a little bit of uh, language in the uh, first full paragraph. So again, this is on the 1690 House, and this has also already been uh, drafted and, and approved, and it's meeting the, uh, the needs of the parties, as, as far as we know. Um, but the addition would be in the paragraph that begins that the city council, um, if just before preservation restriction, if we added the word perpetual. So it would be authorized the acceptance of a perpetual preservation restriction. 
Second. Thank, thank you. If I may, That's I believe that language is consistently repeated throughout the two other locations as you read part of that. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we could, or I think we decided just to put it in that first place, and then that would, that would carry so over to the other two over. references. Yeah. So again, this is going to, um, you know, help on the preservation side, but it's also going to allow um, this project to move forward, which I think we, we certainly want to see happen. So the order as amended? Yes. There's a second on second. that? Second. Any further discussion? Council uh, Tonto? Yeah, uh, this is in Ward 4, and I appreciate everyone's efforts to, uh, to bring this to a conclusion. Uh, I just wanted to note the, uh, there's no restitution being done internally in the 1690 House, but there is restitution being done externally to the 1690 House. And uh, my understanding is that, that there will not be an occupancy permit granted until that is completed, and we have to make sure that gets done. Second, um, so I'll, I'll just leave that, that it's also historical markers that will be placed um, as, as part of the agreement. Also, Sorry, I'm going to ask if, if the sponsor or maybe the chair could just back up for one second to the process again, how this is going to work. So how, how do those things, how do we make sure those things get done? Is it the planning board that's holding the, the, the so it's, you know, it's holding it right now? Is that, is that the process that, because it, we're just approving the, the historic commission to accept the preservation restriction, if I read this order correctly. But we don't have any of those details. So just, so we pass this, and then the preservation restriction is complete in terms of its negotiation. It's been drafted and written and approved by the state. But separate is the restitution to the outside of the building, or that has no. to happen before the, just, just, just uh, give me comfort that we have a process that will ensure that this now goes smoothly until the end of it and all the occupancies are done. Whoever can explain it to me, I, I just lost it there on how that, where this goes from here. Maybe that's the best way to ask it. Who votes so, next? So on just what? on the 1690 house, uh, once, once the exterior of the 1690 house is complete, then an occupancy permit would be granted and, and it could, and, and, and the, the historic signs. But that's, that's separate and, from and this And there would be the planning department. That's separate from the toll building? It's okay. related, very much related, well, how that, but it's separate. Yeah. And so, so is a zoning officer anywhere in this? Is, is, is it's the only one that can give the permit the to zone, sign off on the occupancy permit. permit. It's the building official. I, but I meant the yeah. zoning, and the new position. I, I, I just, you know, it just would be nice to close the book on this and not see it again for all of our sakes, I think. So I just want to make sure, I'm just trying to understand who's holding the ball yeah, on, I, I, on these. I, I can't explain it uh, as Director Port did. I know we've got yeah. you know, parties in the audience that probably could, but we went over this pretty thoroughly on both of these um, preservation restrictions. And yeah, my understanding and my recollection from my notes is that after the 1690 preservation restriction is recorded, and again, I believe this has all been agreed to um, then there are three occupancy permits that would be issued. Um, and w if, when the toll is done, again, that's going to be sometime in December. I think there's another two. Mm -hmm. And then everything will be, be released. And, and we were given assurance by Director Port, I mean, who uh, went into laborious detail about how exactly this is going to go, that, that it would, would happen. So, for, so just for the sake for my own indemnification, it is the planning office that holds the ball on this one. And if anything goes wrong with it, that's who we would look at and say, what happened here with this process? That's all I want to know. My understanding. So not, not in our court. It's in, it's in the planning director, particularly. OK, thank you. I'm all set. Thank you. Motion right. in favor? Aye. Opposed? Right. Roll call on that. Take the next one. Council? Order. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, motion to remove uh, order number 60 from committee. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve order number 60. So, so again, so this is, this is on the toll building. This preservation restriction has not been finalized, has not been agreed to by the city. And again, I think it's the, um, you know, we would want state approval and we would want the, uh, the Newburyport Historical uh, Commission would would definitely have to sign off on it. Uh, so again, this is kind of a new 
um, thing that's been then has been put into this mix, and I, I would also like to amend uh, similarly that the word perpetual be put in that um, first full paragraph, so that the city of Newburyport, et cetera, et cetera, approve the acceptance of a perpetual preservation restriction. Second. And we voted two to zero on committee. The motion as amended was and seconded. Second. Okay, discussion, Councilor Tonto. Uh, just for clarity, I think uh, uh, the at-large council has said that it was just the facade, uh, and in my understanding, it's the entire external, all four, then more than four walls, but all, all mm -hmm. sides oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. restriction. Um, yeah. right? It is the size. I, I did, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think facade means the whole, yeah, all four sides, sides but some Rear facade, so. side, yeah. So, <clears throat> am I to understand that this clear. one is not at the same point where the other one is, Correct. so in that it's not hasn't been. So I'm already sort of une was sort of uneasy with the last one because I don't have the document in front of me. So what is the purpose behind voting on this tonight? Should should we not wait? I mean, it, it hasn't gone well, arguably. So now is the time for us to do it properly. So why don't why wouldn't we consider recommitting this to planning development until we're we're solid on on what it is that we're accepting the restriction on? I mean, should, how, how far out is that? Is that months in, in process? Is it weeks? I mean, if it's any time before December 11th, or even frankly, if it gets moved to the next session, I think there's a value in just, I mean, we're standing here on camera saying we're accepting something that essentially sounds like doesn't exist. You know, I, I don't know. Mr. President. I mean, we're not, you know, kind of did a, a workflow on this. I mean, we, there's no reason for us to be a bottleneck on this. I mean, this is the historical commission that would accept this. And and in Mass Historic, um, you know, so they're, they're the ones who are going to decide if this is written in the way it should be. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to come back to us. Thank you, President. Yeah, and I, and I think Councillor uh, Cameron stated it correctly. Um, it's, we're kind of the past through entity in this approval process. The major players are the Historic Commission and the Mass Historic, which have very specific, particularly Mass Historic, expectations in terms of the final settlement agreement, the negotiated uh, language that, that, that's being worked on. That may it be avail available by December 12th, uh, December 11th? I can't answer that. I don't think anybody here could. It may be. Uh, we thought it was prudent to give it a conditional approval so as not to slow the process, but to allow it to by the end of this calendar year be executed and protect the historic assets that uh, are intended to be a, a protected by this particular agreement. And we had some confidence that uh, the language itself would be appropriately vetted by folks who are probably better qualified than you and I to, <laughs> to make that judgment. Could be anybody. Council Tonto, then Council Z. Yeah, the planning uh, director indicated in, in committee that it was his opinion that if passing this in and of itself would help the process of, of getting a designation by Mass Historical Commission, uh, which is something we very much desire. So, I mean, he said that in committee. So. I appreciate the sentiment, but um, I, I, can't, I can't come on board. I, I think, I mean, to, to go honest with the previous one, the argument should have been, I, need to see, I want to see the preservation restriction because it, if it's passing through us, we must mean something. If we just say we mean nothing, then we might as well abdicate our responsibility to accept these entirely to the Historic Commission forever and all of time, which we do with other commissions. So for Parks Commission, we say, okay, here are the parks, they're under your jurisdiction. So um, I, you know, as, as usual, or as we often have this argument on the floor, I, I don't think we're a bottleneck to anything. Go get it done and then bring, to, bring it to us when it's ready kind of gave a little bit of a pass on the last one uh, out of confidence that it's been negotiated, um, but doesn't sound like it, you know, it's, uh, it's quite there yet, so. Just, I'll just say one, one last thing. You know, part of it is to get a read from us if we're gonna approve this. I mean, if we're not gonna approve it, then they're not gonna do all this work to try to get this. So, I mean, I don't, I don't see, there's a settlement in, to, in what's been a very complicated situation, so we can vote it up or down. Um, but you know, I'd like to see us put a closure to this and get this thing over with. Anything else? Roll call. So roll call on uh, order 60, which is uh, for the record, 
the property uh, located at 260 Merrimack Street, referred to as the Toll Building. Councillor Earls. Yes. Councillor Argument for the record has recused himself. Councillor Junta. Yes. Councillor Tonta. Yes. Councillor Vogel. Yes. Councillor Zee. No. Councillor Cameron. Yes. Councillor Connell. Yes. Councillor Cronin. Yes. Council O'Brien. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, several more items. Um, let's see here. I'd like to remove by motion communication 38. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve. Second. Could you read it, please? So okay. this is um, communication from March on Lower Custom House Way. We actually did uh, approve this in committee many months ago, um, and as Councilor Eigerman explained in committee uh, the other night, uh, we did vote to receive and file this three to zero. Um, so, you know, there there is some movement on Lower Custom House Way, and some of that, um, you know, all the way to the uh, to the Harbor Master facility hasn't been settled, I don't believe, but um, but we have. Uh, started to assert our rights on the uh, trapezoidal part up by Water Street. Yeah, just a little bit more color. Uh, so this actually dates back a couple of years. Uh, there, there are two public ways, yep. one on either side of the Custom House. Uh, that's because originally when the Custom House was being used as a Custom House, people had to get goods there. There's no dispute about Upper Custom House Way, which is bricked in. Um, uh, it, the, the control of Lower Custom House Way arose when we were doing the Harbor Master facility because we had to do a water and sewer line. Uh, we discovered through a title examination that it is settled law that we own uh, the, the portion of that way closest to Water Street. Um, so there was a, a bit of a delay uh, in getting the abutting owner, uh, New England Development, to remove parked cars from the public way. They did so in August, so that issue is done. But to elaborate on what um, Councillor Cameron said, we still have not settled control of the rest of the public way that we believe exists all the way down to the uh, Harbor Master building, and that's to be continued. Neither party has waived its rights. Councillor okay. um, Point of order, I think the at large council has said a move to approve. Should it be received uh, and filed? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Second. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Mr. President, motion to remove communication 69, air quality analysis of intermodal facility. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. to receive and file. Second. Discussion? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So this was uh, communication to us that included uh, the scope of services when the city was going to go out for the air quality analysis um, prior to us moving on the intermodal facility. So it's moved at this point. Um, as we know, there was later the analysis was submitted. I think uh, that was a separate item. Maybe that was just a communication that was received and filed. But um, anyway, so this is this original sort of scope was included uh, still in our committee. So we made a motion to receive and file three to zero. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Go ahead. Um, Mr. President, um, I'll just handle the uh, last communication, communication 115, which is a memo from the planning director regarding proposed zoning amendments on council agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to receive and file. Second. Second. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this was just a memo f in October from the planning director about, I think, it maybe inclusionary zoning, the uh, R2 to R3, R3 to R2, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the parking um, amendments. And they were just informational, so we voted to receive and file. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Mr. President, last item. Uh, so the master plan we, we're not going to bring out tonight. Um, we, we received an update, an updated version, and I'll, uh, I know um, Director Port sent some, some information. So we would be looking to bring that out of committee on, uh, and we did vote to bring that out of committee, but we'll do that for the next meeting because I think that may be a longer 
uh, discussion and probably everyone needs some time to absorb uh, what's been sent to them, but um, would like to make a motion to bring out ordinance uh, 12, Zoning Amendment, Off-Street Parking Regulations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All right, thank you. Um, so, the story on this, uh, so this was uh, submitted by Councilor Eigerman and myself uh, back in September. We've had several meetings on it. Um, and we met last, uh, was approved um, by the planning board uh, with some suggestions. We met as planning and development again, so maybe a second or third time on this matter on the, uh, the 21st, last Tuesday. And so what you, you did have on your desks when you came here is the, the most updated version. And um, it was in the packet for uh, for the meeting, but we did make some changes, and, and I'll go over those. Um, so, the basic idea, and uh, Councillor Eigerman can give you a more thorough um, context for this, is you know we're really trying to prevent uh, an instance where in the downtown overlay district, where some developer is trying to create a new use, such as the Yale House, um, and if they don't have parking on site for them to use the current um, uh, way to use the uh, municipal parking to cover their uh, parking need. Um, when the Yale House was approved, there was no um, there was no fee or no money put in by them. And so, what this would do is to change that so it would still allow the 300 foot radius. Um, and if they did not provide on-site parking, and again, there's residential use versus non-residential use. Um, they could, with a, through a special permit granting process, they could be allowed to count um, some of that municipal parking. Um, we, we increased the fee. Originally it was 7,500 per space, but we went to 15,000 with a, an inflation um, factor in there, and that is in here. Uh, we did stick to the 300 feet. Uh, the planning board was interested in, uh, and they were curious why we did not allow the um, the garage or you know, intermodal facility or some sort of municipal structured parking to count um, as, as if it were a surface lot. So we did make an adjustment uh, last week to that. So f it would not apply to any um, development in Waterfront West overlay, but for south of Merrimack Street, um, they could count the garage. Again, all, all this parking is shared. There's no expectation that anybody uh, gets to use it solely for their purposes, but if there was a development uh, in, of some sort and they needed to use that to cover their parking requirement, it would be allowed with that fee. Uh, and again, that's a pretty substantial fee, mm -hmm. uh, de obviously depending on the number of, uh, of uh, spaces that they needed. So, so, so those are some of the things that we um, went back and forth on and what you see uh, and again, it would be a little easier in color, but um, that is the final version that you see it. So it'll say September 11th. Uh, with that, it's incorporated by the Planning and Development Committee on November 21st. I know if Councilor Eigerman wants to add more. Councilor Eigerman? Yeah, just a little bit more detail. So um, uh, this ordinance actually dates back uh, many, many years. Uh, the idea which is retained is that it's in uh, downtown New Report's interest to have uh, central parking rather than tearing down buildings and having to have a surface lot next to every building. Obviously that would end up destroying oh, downtown. So, so that's left in place. The, the error that Councillor Cameron uh, brought up is uh, we, never, we never asked for a fee and there was never, it was by right, meaning no one ever checked to see how much parking was actually available. So the alehouse came in and kind of blew up the model because they, they didn't really provide any parking and it's a very large restaurant, over 400 seats theoretically, if they open the outdoor ones. And you know, there was, in the peak season, we don't have any capacity in Green Street. So we weren't getting compensated. The fee that was adopted uh, years ago was only for a garage. And of course, we still don't have a garage. We're working on that. The other change I just want to highlight is that 
the system they originally adopted is if someone was going to rely on shared parking in a parking garage, that the city council would vote on that. We've changed that and the planning board agreed that it, it, the planning board should be doing that. So as long as the planning board vets it, they'll grant a special permit, the fee is paid, we don't need to politicize that issue. Um, another change is, remember I said that the intent clearly was about downtown, but the way that the ordinance was written is it wasn't limited to downtown. Hmm. So staff uh, actually did a map for us and said, well, you realize that someone could be within 300 feet of the uh, Plum Island Point parking lot and not have to provide any parking. Similarly, within 300 feet of Cashman Park, somewhere between 300 feet of Cushing Park, which was never intended, I don't believe. And it's certainly not something that we or the plan as sponsors of the planning of, uh, board wanted. So that's taken out. So you can only use this in the downtown. You can't use it for those other outlying parking uh, lots. Mm -hmm. I hope you'll support it. I think this is something that really I, I, I originally had introduced almost four years ago and it, it got lost in the shuffle and um, it's a cleanup we need to do. I have uh, several questions I'm hoping the sponsors can help me with. So <laughs> my, my first question is um, on the payment, the, the dollar amount. So the, 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 the double uh, cross out of a rate of $5,000, was that from the current existing ordinance? Yes. So if, if there was a, a $5,000 per space for the unmet, unmet parking need, mm -hmm. why didn't the alehouse have to pay? Maybe that would be my first question. Because uh, it was only for a garage, and of course there was no garage at that time. They were relying on the Green Street lot. The amendment makes it clear that you have to pay no matter what facility you're relying upon. The sponsors, Ed and I, we did it at 7500 on the theory that that was uh, a bargain, really, uh, if, you, if you were relying on either a, a garage space or a surface lot. We've all been through excruciating detail on how expensive it is to build parking. So that's how the number went up. Uh, it's the planning board that actually raised it, recommended raising it to 15,000. We had proposed 75, I just want to make it 7,500. So my second question is, is that $15,000, I just want to make sure I'm clear in how I'm reading this. There is no negotiation or argument. The unmet, it's, it's a straight formulaic objective manner to go through it. Okay. Um, my next question is about um, Waterfront West Overlay District. So in a um, memo received from Director Port, um, you know, I'll just read it verbatim so I don't try and, and interpret it anyway. It says, it was requested that we make it explicitly clear that NED would not be able to use municipal parking and then parentheses structures or lots to meet their requirements within the so-called Waterfront West Overlay District. Because recent confirmation conversations, pardon me, have focused on WWOD and potentially overlooked parking allowances in the underlying WMU District, which is the Waterfront Marine Use, the revised text refers to the entire area within the Waterfront West Overlay District. Regardless of whether NED requests a WWOD special permit pursuant to the Overlay District, if NED does not pursue a large project under Waterfront West Overlay procedures, one might argue they could take advantage of municipal parking in the underlying WMU. This revised language now addresses this oversight. So my first question is, it's my understanding that that owner has already placed a plan, an ANR, uh, appro approval not required in front of the planning board. So can we really put that cat back in the bag, uh, that, that, that we can really preclude them from using our municipal parking if they opt for the WMU? Because b before I finish, for several months it's been said that, you know, the, you know, NED can't use the municipal lots, but actually based on that reading, they could, and I'm not sure that if a plan has already been in, it, uh, my lay understanding of zoning, that if it's frozen, it's done. If they go with that plan, we, we, can't, we can't put the cat back in the bag. So let me pause there for a second. Well, a couple things. Okay, and when we did discuss this in committee. So uh, all good questions, and, and this, it is complex. First of all, let's use another property owner as an example. Minco owns what used to be a garage, and they have a, propo a proposal in right now for a variance to build a multi-unit uh, building. So they, they have not frozen the zoning in any way. So they are in the Waterfront West Overlay District. So it's not just about New England development. They would not be able to uh, avail themselves of this mechanism. And that's deliberate. We didn't want them to. Um, now, let's, let's talk about, there is a, a mechanism in Massachusetts under state law to freeze, the, freeze uh, zoning. But it, there are different levels. Sometimes you only freeze the use. Other times you freeze all of the zoning. 
and also there are time limits on how long you can freeze it for. So I, I, don't, wanna, I don't know the details of the NED case, I don't. I think anecdotally I've heard that too, that they did a map on Waterfront West. I know they've done it on the garage site that we're about to buy. So um, it is true that they may be grandfathered effectively um, for their site that they're proposing for Waterfront West, but what they're grandfathered under may just be the uses, I don't know the details, you know, the, the use restrictions there, and it may not extend to their parking requirement. Also, as I say, it's a time limit. And I'll, I'll point out, I mean, they're already, they've been there 12 years. So, you know, time limits matter. You know, it's not, it's not inevitable. Um, and, you know, even if we can't capture everyone, I mean, we got, we got caught with our pants down on this alehouse really badly. And, um, you know, you don't know what else is going to pop up. Uh, also, there are other properties that NED owns that are in play that I, I have not heard that they put maps on to freeze the zoning. Uh, Oldies is one. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, the Pontiac dealership on Liberty Street, uh, Fitzgerald Building, that's, that's coming down. That's a great development site. So, uh, is this airtight? No, but, you know, no zoning is, frankly. Uh, but this, this would be a step in the right direction. So j just to finish up, I only have a couple more. So on page two in the revised one, it says, notwithstanding the above, no development may utilize or obtain special permit for the use of municipal lots or structures, blah, 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 in, within the geographic boundaries of the waterfront way overlay district. So I just want to be clear that I'm reading that correctly. That would then encompass future potential uses under the WMU for a permit that hasn't even been filed yet. Because Correct. even though we're not saying WMU directly, we're using the geographic boundaries Correct. to mm -hmm. define it. Okay. All right, so my, my last one is more of a concern. I'm sure you debated this quite a bit. I, I couldn't make some of the committee meetings on this one, uh, but the use of the garage, I think, is a big question for me, particularly because, put aside Waterfront West for a moment, but there are several other lots um, right around. In fact, one is, is, is gonna be the remaining parcel once the garage is built. And um, in a sense, we're creating huge value potentially for that site, and I, I think this goes to the $15,000 question does, have we met, I mean, so there, there's a few of them. I mean, 300 feet is kind of hard to visualize, but if you think about where the garage is, what sites that are currently, I think of the Lombardi site that was demolished last year. So there are some questions about whether, you know, we really, it's funny, the last one was written to exclude the garage and now we're bringing in the garage in. Is that really what we want to do? Uh, because A, we don't even really know what this thing looks like yet um, in terms of demand or use, uh, certainly, it would change the formula or would have changed the discussion to think about the garage in general, about it, everything about it, really, if you thought about, let's say, let's say there are 10 parcels that reach that 300 foot mark. So I'm just throwing that out there as a concern for the moment. I look forward to hearing what everybody that's has to say. Well, that's why, I mean, no, no, that's, that's absolutely valid. And that's why originally the sponsors, you know, we did propose not to allow anyone to use the garage at all on any side of Merrimack Street. But I think the, the compromise struck by the planning board is wise in that it's not by right. You still have to go to the planning board and they, in their discretion, they can give the special permit or not. You know, so presumably they would have data on usage of our garage, you know, assuming it's built, and that, you know, what the operating costs are, if there's any capacity. So that would be the check. And, and, and again, the 15,000 is, as you said, non-negotiable. So we would at least get that value back. We would get some mitigation. So um, yes, it is true that, uh, and deliberately so, the legislation as proposed tonight would give the opportunity to the planning board to consider allowing this in return. So say New England Development on that remnant piece, uh, they do, uh, they get 10 condos and they want to uh, you know, uh, credit uh, 20 parking spaces, and so 20, so it's, you know, 30, uh, 300,000 dollars. The planning board will have the opportunity to entertain that. They don't have to approve it. <laughs> my, my only concern with that is we, we've spent a lot of time in this chamber talking about running a cohesive parking system that goes to one authority that is looking, keeping their eye on the ball, so to say, with demand and so forth. Yeah. And I'm just worried that you bring another cook into the kitchen and you say, well, now you can grant uses of the spaces. And they're looking at it maybe from the planning perspective of the project and not looking at it from the global parking perspective of our downtown, which is something that I think we all have generally agreed we want to approach holistically. 
So part of me wants to say I'd be a lot more comfortable if we left the garage out for now and, and at least let it, let it, again, see what happens with it, see if it gets built and so forth, and then see how it performs and then decide, are we going to do a parking authority? Are we going to continue with the revolving fund structure? And then try and, uh, like for example, I, if we had that structure, we could tell the planning board to communicate with this body, whatever it is, but having attended a parking advisory committee meeting, I'm not sure we, we have that structure or infrastructure to, to even look at the data and say, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Uh, the garage has been, uh, you know, less used or overused or it, it's going to defeat the purpose perhaps of, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of moving pieces with that and I thought we were trying to move towards convergence and I'm, I'm worried that this kind of will blow a hole in the side of that. Dr. Earls? Um, I, I actually made the argument um, to, to, to allow some properties to use the 300 feet um, to use the, the garage. And let, let's just take an example of, of uh, um, sites that are west of, of where the facility would be built. Well, Pure Bliss is, the driving school, the sign company. Now, what I want to do is be able to make them mimic the downtown. In other words, build right out to the sidewalk. Realistically, it will be cheaper for them to build something away from the road and have butt end of cars then parked like interlocks. I would like it to be much more brought to the street. This allows the developer now to actually do what we want. To, to put cars in the to central parking facility and bring out to the street, which is what I think anybody who is looking at downtown and way this plan is why it works. It becomes a walking street, becomes a bicycling street, and we put cars away. I don't want, there's going to be no money to put cars behind those buildings. It's not going to happen. So what you'd be left with is a simple development going in and saying, let's push 20 feet, let's push 25 feet back. We have a smaller building and we're parking cars in front of the building like a strip mall. That was, I wanted to avoid that in terms of planning. Council Agamem, Council Junto, go ahead, I, then Council Agamem. I just have a couple of concerns here, and um, I unfortunately couldn't come to the, to the meeting, but it, at first when we were discussing this, I thought it was a $15,000 fee, but then as I'm, I'm reading this and, and, and listening to Council and Agamem, it looks like it's $15,000 per space. And when we're talking about possibly the Yale House in New England development, yep, you're by talking about some serious money with folks that appear to have a lot of money because of, of the structures they're planning to build and or they have built. But then when I start to think about some of the small shop owners that don't have any parking, and I'm wondering, $15,000 seems to be a huge amount for somebody who's running a small shop down on Inn Street. I'm just wondering, have we is there accommodations for somebody who doesn't have any parking spots at all that want to move into a business or are they not involved? Is it only building of a new structure? Yeah. Only building yeah. of a new construction? I just want to make sure that the yeah, smaller absolutely. businesses are, are accommodated. They're not going to get hit with a... a f just okay. like the L House. <laughs> uh, uh, thank yep. you. Thank you. Council Agam and then well, Council Pullman. And, and then I'll, I'll stop. I'll take those in reverse order. Yeah, no, that was one of the problems when I first introduced this four years ago is there was a misunderstanding. It, it can only go prospectively. So all of the businesses on, on State Street are grandfathered. Um, the only, only if you change the use to something that's more intense. So say, uh, you know, so, so for example, the, the uh, Lombardi's oil would be a good example. It's, it's vacant now. So they would be hit with the fee if they wanted to use it, if they're not grandfathered by freezing the zoning. But if, if uh, um, you know, uh, uh, a shoe store goes into a, a jewelry store, uh, there's no effect. It, it's, it runs with the land, they're already grandfathered, that's done. Uh, on the planning board being the decider, um, no, I, I think they really are the logical place to do it. I mean, a, a parking authority, we're not there yet, but they're much more fiscally minded and, and really, I mean, the job of our planning board is to look holistically. They're not supposed to be looking project by project. That's been one of our criticisms of our boards. And, and in other areas, this kind of system has worked. Um, you know, Somerville has something like this, specifically um, Andover um, has got a shared parking system where you go to the planning board and they give you a special permit. And they're the ones that make sure that there's enough capacity for all of downtown. So I don't despair. I mean, it, 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 I, think they can, I think they can hack it. That's fun. Second. Just following up on that, um, <coughs> several years ago when Loretta moved from uh, State Street to Pleasant Street, uh, they, they had a retail store there. 
and now the retail store had a change of use. Would that change of use from the novelty shop that was there, I forget the name of it, to um, a 100 seat restaurant, would that trigger a? Um, just uh, by law, just the increment. So, so I, don't, I don't know off the top of my head what the parking requirement was for retail uh, versus for the restaurant, but it would be the increments. So say they were required to have, I'm making it up, you know, 30 parking spaces and they didn't have them. If the restaurant came in and they were required to do 40, the increment would be subject to it, the 10. They would have to, if they could not find a way to provide those 10 um, and, wanted, and they couldn't find a private place to do it. Remember that yeah. under existing law, you can use a private lot or a private structure and pay nothing to the city. That's fine. But if you want to rely on a public facility, you have to pay the one-time fee. I'd just like to try. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to amend to see if I can get any support for striking the words and or structure throughout all the pages to eliminate the garage for now. I've made my arguments, I think, as far as what they are. And I definitely think it's something that could be revisited in the future. But I'd, I'd like to see if, if we can hold this to lots for today until we get through the forest a little bit and see where we end up on the other end. Because um, I, I can appreciate the Ward 2 Council's comments, but my, my comment is, will the planning board be looking for occupancy rates in the garage to say, yeah, you know what, it's already at 78% uh, full, so therefore piling in another use on top of that doesn't make sense. I mean, will they in practical terms and how will they gather that data? Um, so I'd like to make that motion to amend. I'd like to see if anybody will, will second it and have a vote on it. So the amendment is? To uh, strike the words and slash or structures throughout, structure or structures throughout all five pages, which essentially would take what we have here and make it uh, apply to lots and not to the garage for now or for, for the purposes of tonight's discussion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Councilor Conn? I think part of the uh, discomfort with this uh, proposal is, uh, relates to uh, the fact that zoning is a dynamic um, part of the law, and particularly to, to in a community like this where there's so much development and pressure, and there's so many ways that people are nudging the public infrastructure, trying to advantage themselves by gaining access to the public infrastructure so that they can do what they want to do with the property that they've purchased or they plan to purchase. And I think we're going to be back at this again and again and again. And I, I think you, you, you referred to that a little bit earlier. I, this is not something that um, exists in amber. We're going to come back at these sort of issues, just as we will, and we've all discussed this, come back and look at the parking system more holistically when we get a little bit farther down the road with the garage. And we'll have our consultant back in. He was very helpful, I thought, uh, talking about demand pricing and uh, um, you know, on-street restrictions in some areas, uh, resident-only restrictions in, in uh, some areas, and, and we'll try to balance out the system at that time. But, but overall, I, I think that uh, there, there's another factor here, and, and that is that I, I sensed in, in, in what uh, Ward uh, 1 Councilor just said, uh, some um, anxiety about the ability and the inclination of the planning board to discuss and analyze parking impacts. They do so at a, on a regular basis, and, and in my judgment, do so quite effectively. Uh, they have some expertise, they have experience, certainly, in, in making those calculations, and, and that is, in fact, their charge as they work through the process of analyzing proposals. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the present language, uh, particularly so that we don't disadvantage those properties west of the Titkin Street parking lot uh, in a way that we might later regret. Do we have to um, do it all tonight? Um, no, perhaps not. And, and if your amendment sails, I'm sure we'll be back at it, addressing that particular impact at some future date. But I, I think that it was, was well developed and uh, well vetted uh, with the planning board and uh, the planning department. And, and I prefer the, the previous construction without the amendment. 
Uh, I just want to correct one thing on my own personal opinion. My discomfort with it is that we don't have a business plan for the parking garage. We, we, we opined and requested that several times saying, let's get the parking consultant in first, let's map out the downtown, do all of our parking things, and then we could make these decisions better. I understand and appreciate that the consultant is now underway, but it may be, it may be a year yet. And um, so anyways, I'll ask you to support my amendment and uh, for the reasons I've already stated, and I'll move the question. Roll call. Roll call on the motion to amend by striking the words and or structures throughout the ordinance, ordinance number uh, 12. Councillor Earls. No. Councillor Agerman. No. Councillor Junta. No. <coughs> Councillor Tonta. No. Councillor Vogel. No. Councillor Zeed. Yes. Councillor Cameron. No. Councillor Connell. No. Councillor Cronin. Yes. Councillor Bryan. Yes. Motion to amend fails, leaving the motion to approve on the floor. Councilor Junta. Thanks. Just to uh, get back to um, a few more questions here. So it, it does appear as if we have a, a change of use. Um, uh, for instance, like the bookstore that cut itself in half and made half of, of it a coffee shop, that they would get hit with this. And, I have to say, I'm really struggling with $15,000 space because I'm wondering if that would, that would keep businesses from expanding or building. I, I know we're focused on the big guys, but I'm really worried about the smaller folks. And, and um, then I see where you know, the money's going into an intermodal transportation improvement fund and there's some, you know, some great language in here about it. And uh, I know right now our parking money goes to downtown improvements, but is this money going to be allowed to be spread out elsewhere in the community, or is it going to be just downtown improvement also? Um, okay. Um, first, on, on the amount, <clears throat> you're asking a fair question. I mean, just, just so you know, in, in other states, they would require actually a study, a nexus study, where you actually have to show dollar for dollar that what you're charging is commensurate with the service. I mean, we know $15,000 to build and maintain for the life of a, of a use, call it 50 years, it's going to be less than 15000 I'm sorry, it's going to be more than $15,000. So we're comfortable with that. I do think you're raising a good question, which is let's, let's do some examples. So Loretta's, let's pick on that one. If, he, if, if that developer had to uh, pay the incremental amount of $150,000, would that have killed the project? And you, you have to ask yourself that, and I'll re we'll return to that, and we should debate it. But on the ITIF, that actually was in the original ordinance. So we're not <coughs> changing any of that language. The ITIF, so far as I understand, uh, does not actually exist. So uh, when we put this in, I put the question to the auditor, um, uh, uh, Ethan Manning, do you want a companion order to do the ITIF? And I would welcome that. I think we have to have that debate. What do you do with this money? Um, and and uh, some of that came up in the recent campaign. So that's not determined in this ordinance. That is to be determined, so far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, there is no ITIF, and this body has to decide what to do with the money. But okay, now getting back to the amount of the fee. Again, realize what the mitigation is, is that you know, for the city to build a park, uh, let's just take Green Street lot. So there's the cost that they paid in 1975 to build it, and then all of the years since, uh, the last 42 years to maintain it, it, it's a lot of money per space. And then you gotta ask yourself, all right, if I'm a business, what would it cost me to build uh, parking spaces? So, I mean, Loretta's, there's nowhere for them to put the cars. I mean, so, and, and if they were to knock out part of their back wall and create parking, so maybe a better example would be Pure Bliss, because we were working on that one. They can get more revenue by having more square footage for their shop. They can generate more money to recoup that $150,000. I guess that's really the bottom line. I, I, I will say 15,000, because we didn't do a study, it's not a magic number. It is a fair number. Other communities have a higher number. So I, I, I alluded to Somerville, it's much higher. You know, it's twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars, but the land values are higher there. So if you open a shop in Union Square, Somerville, you can amortize the cost better. 
So 15,000 is a compromise. I, will, I can't speak for the co-sponsor, but for myself, if it would uh, ease passage, I, I would be willing to go to 10,000. I still think that is fair to the public, and that, that is a fair amount. Frankly, taking our example of Loretta's, that would be a bargain. If, if he could have bought his way to open a new restaurant in downtown Newburyport on Pleasant Street in what used to be the J.J. Newbury's, I believe, um, and at a cost of $100,000 one-time payment, that's a good deal. Anything else? Mm. else Cameron? Th thanks, Mr. President. Just also, so the other the part that we, we mentioned in passing, you know, both for non-residential and residential use, it's having your parking on site, that's uh, Roman numeral number one. Uh, number three is using municipal parking. Uh, but number two is coming up with some sort of off-site arrangement with a private lot. And what we talked about in at least one committee meeting was, and this is absolutely a reason why we need a more holistic approach to parking, is you know, private businesses downtown, maybe with or without the city's cooperation, coming up with cooperative agreements uh, with, with the banks that aren't, those parking spaces aren't really used at night. Uh, and uh, this has been talked about by many of us, I think, over the years. Um, the IC that could probably use some money, which is a little further than 300 feet uh, in most of these cases. But I think th those are other ways that a, you know, a smaller place like, you know, whatever the parking requirement might have been for Atomic Cafe or whatever it, it is now versus what it was before. If they could point to, you know, some sort of signed agreement that was going to be binding for a certain period of time. Five years. Five years. Um, that would be a way for them to get out of it without paying us the money. Granted, they'd probably be paying, uh, you know, a private entity some for their surface parking. Yeah, just on the five years, I'm sorry, I should have highlighted that. So that, that's actually pretty generous compared to other communities. Oftentimes they want to know that it's permanent or they want to know that it's for the life of the use. Five years, I, I used from my own professional experience, that's pretty easy. So you can find, you can do a deal and we're creating a market. So we're, as, as, as Councillor Cameron just said, we're creating a market. If, if the cost for Loretta's was $100,000, then they know, all right, if I can enter a lease for five years at less than $100,000, I, I can do a better deal, and they will. All right, let's move the question, I guess. Roll call. So roll call for the approval of ordinance number 12 at $15,000, correct, Councillor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Councillor Earls. Yes. Councilor Agamon. Yes. Councilor Junta. No. Councilor Tonta. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Z. No. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. No. Councilor President O'Brien. No. This is a zoning ordinance, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Needs eight. Motion fails, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anything else? Council Cameron, anything else? Uh, no, nope. all set. Thank you. Public safety? Nothing to report. Public utilities? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, ordinance 15, motion to remove. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Is this a discussion? Is this a so uh, I realize that in the packet, um, the underlines showing the changes didn't come through. So just to make sure it's clear on um, what we're talking about, this is. Uh, just want to make sure, yeah, or Ordinance 15, I'm getting some funny looks. So signs in the public ways is the one that we're talking about here. And um, really, the ordinance is, is the only changes are in on the first page, uh, item B and item C, essentially the final, uh, final paragraph of both. So what it says there is it says, um, in the event that any relief is granted by the city council, such relief shall expire on March 17th of the second calendar year following approval. Such relief is subject to revocation by supermajority vote of the city council at its sole discretion at any time. So basically, it, it changes two things. Um, as you know, standing on this same floor, we've made, uh, offered some um, relief, if you will, on signs. 
and we've tried to do it on the floor on the fly where we set an expiration date for the relief separate from the permitting for say for the sign or whatever which may be done through the clerk's office. So I, I did confer with the clerk's office and um, they said they would welcome some help on clarifying the expiration date. So it, it does that uh, by codifying a specific expiration on the relief and the second thing it does is it, it grants the council the power to revoke at any time which I added in uh, really in large part because of wayfinding in case it ever becomes um, a, a, a matter or th a thing, then we have the power to, to call the relief back in. B relates to signs, C relates to merchandise displays, but this, the change is the same. So uh, this is a continuous tweaking as, as we do, and so uh, just add that in and would ask for your support on it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Council. Uh, yes. In that line, in the event that any relief is granted by the City Council, so it shall be shall expire concurrent. In your language was. I'm I'm sorry, you're asking. What, what was that change again? Oh, well, it, it's a new sentence. It's not a change. That sentence didn't exist in okay. the current. So. So do I have it in this version here? You do. It just the underlined. Expire. It just didn't catch the okay. formatting because it was in red in the document, but the packet's black and white. I just, so shall expire concurrent with, and I thought you said something else. No. Um, well. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, the, the version in the packet is, is not the amended version. I, I pulled up the one I submitted, so I can send that to you okay. if you'd like. Could you read it into the, just read the sentence? Sure. So there, there's the, the language change would be um, the final sentence in both B and C would be in the event that any relief is granted by the city council. Such relief shall expire on March 1st of the second calendar year following approval. Such, release, uh, such relief pardon me, is subject to revocation by a supermajority vote of the City Council at its sole discretion at any time. That exists in C. That's already there. It's in C, but it didn't get into B. Get is that B. what it is? Nope, it's in B. The revocation was already in there. Yeah, this, the, the last sentence is in um, yeah, so Maybe, it's in the not event. Not the March 1st. It's date. after the commas yeah. where, the, where the change. Instead of saying yeah. such relief shall expire concurrent. We'll make that change. Yeah. I can um, send you the. I, I don't know how we crossed. Uh, if, if folks are not comfortable with it, I'm happy to, to wait until the next one and, and uh, put in. A, it's fine with me. It's no, not, not a pressing matter. Two readings. Me two readings. <laughs> the catcher is telling me two, so. I've, whatever the will of the council is, I'll, I'll put it in next time. Um, no, it's an ordinance. It has to have two. It's yeah. not a wave. It's, it's okay if you read it into the record. Okay. In my, in my humble opinion. Yeah. My colleagues will accept it. I uh, would like to proceed. Yeah. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call. Roll call on uh, ordinance number 15 uh, with the change in language as read by Council Azid. Councilor Earls? Yes. Councilor Argaman? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Tonto? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Azid? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor O'Brien? Yes. Motion passes. First reading. Uh, next item, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. uh, motion to remove communication 60. Mobility LLC Highway Access Permit. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Motion received and file. Second. All in Go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is moved. This has been in for 18 months and they didn't act on it and we held it and then they filed another one tonight. So this one's dead. Dead still. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Uh, motion to remove order 47, pilot program wayfinding signage. Signage, sorry. Seven. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion received and file. Second. Uh, this one, uh, we, we couldn't work out in committee how to proceed with this one. Uh, the sponsor uh, may uh, reintroduce it in the, the new session. Thank you. Also, this was uh, jointly referred to planning and development. We also voted three to zero to receive and file it. Anything else? That's it. You got to vote on it. Good to vote on it. Vote on receive and file. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Those weren't in our packet. I didn't see them in my packet. The last two you talked about. Yeah. They Correct. didn't. They didn't yeah, make the, uh, did anyone have it in the packet? No. No. Oh, okay. But, uh, 
as long as it wasn't just me. <laughs> it wasn't that is true. Okay, uh, rules committee, nothing? Nothing to report. Go to the audit. Hold on. Jeez. Standing room only. Council Tonto. I would just remind my fellow councilors to please sign the, uh, the tax setting before you leave this evening. Councilor Earls. Um, I may need help with this. Um, being on the non-prevailing side of a vote that we took tonight, I'd like to, a vote to reconsider. Second. Um, the the, the off-street parking uh, vote that we had taken, I, I, I um, would like to make some amendments to see if we can get this down, um, mainly because um, if we now allow this to sit for six more months, we allow developers to then remap their lots and then get out of any zone, any, any kind of off-street parking um, ordinance that we want to enforce. Second. Hold on for a second. So. They have to be on the prevailing side. They have to be on the prevailing, prevailing side. side. On the non-prevailing side. Right. So you can't oh, do it. You can't do it. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to reconsider. Second. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's got to be someone on the same side makes a second too, doesn't it? No. No? Okay. No. no that, that the non-prevailing side. Oops. Okay. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 So let me just grab that through my head. Council Azid, you made that motion? Yes, sir. From you the vote? prevailing side. From the prevailing side. Right. Thank you. Do you have that right, right? You can't, no. You have to be part of that side to make the motion, I think. He did. So, right. in other words, the, the, nose uh, the nose were the prevailing The nose were the prevailing right. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, it's a motion to reconsider. Oh, this is new. Oh. Uh, ordinance number 12, vote. I haven't seen it. And that was seconded by? Tonto. And I do not have to be on the prevailing side. That's your humble opinion, I agree. <laughs> made it up. <laughs> Before we get too deep down this road, I just want to ask uh, the clerk a question. If something requires two, two readings and it passes its first reading at the final meeting of, of a session, well, is the second reading question. taken by the next council? No. That, that's no. a good question. I, I, I would so. argue it would die because it's a different group the of individuals. Right. Our, right. We have a Rule 9A that says anyone, this body, by majority vote can move something from one session to the next. So you could try to do that by motion. Our rules provide for it. I don't, it makes me very uncomfortable. Understood. Yes. I was just asking in the context of trying to send it back to planning development to hash this out or, or if this is something we need That's to meet do. In other words, day, no problem. To be, to be more clear, Mr. President, that rule refers to committee items. Once it's out and it has a first reading, it's not a committee item anymore, right? To move it to the next session is what you're saying. Right. Understood, okay, thank you try to do anything by waving the rules, but I, <coughs> I think it flies in the face of good government. Yeah. <laughs> you want some amendments, Councilor Earls? Go ahead. Um, yes, I'd like to make amendments to perhaps, um, actually, I'd like to defer to the, to, the, to the Ward 1 to see where he'd be comfortable with making these amendments. Well, I have two questions. The garage is a real sticking point for me, but I'm going to leave that aside because clearly I'm no. not, not in the majority on that one. Um, my question would be, uh, and I hate doing this on the fly, but can you separate change of use from new use in, in an ordinance like this? In other words, can you say the fee is $15,000 if it's a new use and it's uh, $2,500 if it's a change in use? Is that a compromise that, that can be made w with the increment or if it's an incremental? Hmm. Because I, I think the Ward 5 Councilor's point is very well taken. Uh, the mobility of businesses within town to move from one location to one that may suit them better really doesn't necessarily change the parking formula. Uh, moving around the corner, it, it's not a substantive difference. But you know, if you do, if you do, and you know, we need, we need to go to the use table and find out the number of spaces that are needed to really quantify this. But let me start with that and see. Uh, Vogel, thank you, Mr. President. I, um, I think it's. I think change of use would be going from a retail store to a restaurant. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's not going from a retail to a retail. Right. right. Okay. Right. So you're so you're suggesting. I mean, this came to my mind as well. So you're you're suggesting that you have a retail store and you want to put a small restaurant in there, or you want to, the examples that have been cited tonight. You right. want to move around the corner because a new a new space came up. Great. Right. There's always turnover. Uh, we've seen several. I mean, I can think of some that have changed use. But, well, a couple things. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think. I've never. I've never heard of differentiating between. A change of use from a, a new use altogether, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that would hold up. That's just my opinion. I'm not yeah, a city do. solicitor. But also, the, I mean, it's a policy, policy question. Um, 
you know, you are intensifying a use. I mean, you're, if you're going from something that needs less parking to something that needs no more parking, you have to ask yourself who's going to bear that burden. And, and what I, I failed to persuade on the previous vote is that, you know, the, you could set a price that's a fair compensation to the public that allows uh, the business owner, if they want to intensify their use, it's not deniable, they're intensifying it when they go from a gift shop to a restaurant, or if they can cut a better deal for a five-year lease with someone around the corner, they can do that too. So it's a balance, but I'm not inclined to give, personally, to give a free ride to someone who's intensifying a use. If you're going from like use to like use, if, if you know, Scandia restaurant becomes, you know, uh, uh, say or whatever the hell, that's fine, you know, but you are intensifying. When you go from a retailer, the foot traffic is just not as much as the turnover you get from a restaurant. It's just undeniable, and I think that's a policy problem. That's it. Cam? Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Clark, did you? Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, wondering out loud whether there was an actual motion on the reconsider. Um, I know there was a move, a first and a second. Did we take a vote? Oh, I thought sorry. We did. Thought we did. Thought we did. So I thought we did. That, yes, we did. Vote. Yep. We we did. did. We, it's a simple majority yeah, vote. Maybe it was. A, was it a voice vote? It was a voice vote. Yes. It was a voice yeah. vote. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to back up the question. Um, I actually, uh, in, and I don't think this is just to Councilor Zeed. There were there were four, uh, three others that voted uh, uh, in the negative on this. Uh, to me, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to redefining use. I think that that's something I'm not going to feel comfortable voting in favor of because I'd, I'd like to think out the um, sort of implications of something like that. Um, but um, originally I was not keen on allowing garage uses, so although I voted no on your amendment, um, that would not have killed me. Uh, if that passed, I still would have voted for the overall measure. And the amount of money, originally it was uh, 7500 mm -hmm. 7, and you know, the plan, you know, the planning board you know, made some good statements about why that should be more, and then why, you know, why not the garage if, if it's a, so. You know, I found myself, you know, persuaded by that. Um, but if if those are those are items that would uh, induce people to vote for this, uh, you know, to Councillor Junta's point, I I don't want to squash development here. I want to just make sure people are kicking in their fair share, especially the larger uses. And I know sometimes it's easy to to use the worst case example, and in our case, it already happened with the Yale House and their, their parking. And, and again, in the long term, honestly, I, I don't, it'll be really interesting to see if the Yale House, when it finally opens, if that really changes downtown parking. But you know, all we're trying to do here is put a little bit of a guiding hand on it. But you know, I want to see Lombardi developed. I want to see, uh, and part of the reason I went along with the garage is because those little parcels where the driving school is and a couple of other things that I don't go to. Um, but just some of the other properties, I mean, I, we don't want to squelch it. I mean, there's, there's definitely places where we could use a little more development. Waterfront West is its own thing. I don't want to bail them out because uh, I think they, that that would potentially be so huge they, they need to provide their own there. But so I, I'm very open to the, the fee and uh, in the garage and or parking structure. Councilor Gentle. Uh, just so, you know, kind of let you know where I'm at since, you know, it's a no vote is, I, I don't really care about the, you know, I think a municipal parking lot is a municipal parking lot. The garage is a municipal parking lot. So that's why I voted no against the amendment. They're all equal in my eyes, and I, I agree with Councillor Earls that it could create development farther down uh, Merrimack Street, which is a good thing for the city. But the reason why I, I, I'm struggling with this is because the, the fee seems to be very high, and we do have a lot of businesses coming and going and struggling through the winter, and I, I'm just looking at the amount of money, and I'm just I'm struggling with it. I think that I think the bar is way too high, um, and, and this isn't my business. I don't know this. I can't reflect on other communities and what they do. I'm I'm just looking at Newburyport, and I'm I'm thinking about the possibility of you know um, a restaurant having to pony up a uh, hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars plus completely renovating their restaurant and trying to run a business. I just can't vote for that. So. 
But what I can say is this. I don't like the 300 foot rule. I never have. You're, you're, you're allowing somebody to conduct business, but they, they've not provided anything at all. So we have to find something. Um, when this was originally put out months, uh, months and months back at $7,500, I even thought that was a lot of money. And um, I think we need to start someplace that's good for business and it's good for development. And if it turns out to be too good, that can always be changed. Um, but right now, I think the bar is just way too high. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 now I'm going to put my hat on as the War II guy, not as you know, a zoning guy. <laughs> we have a lot of restaurants. So what's happening right now is I'm also getting complaints from the existing restaurant tours. Oh my god, another restaurant opened. And so they're they're scrambling for tools. How do I how do I stop all this competition? We can't support all these restaurants. And to which I often respond, well, I mean, what's the problem with the competition? Competition is a good thing. Well, there's not enough parking. So I mean, you know, that that's why it's logical to expect if someone's going to convert JJ Newbury's to a restaurant, they're going to convert the general store to a restaurant. They're going to you know everything is going to become a restaurant because that's where the money is. You know. You're putting all of that burden. If we don't do anything tonight, you're putting all that burden on the public, and and also my residents, because it's bleeding into my neighborhood. You know, Wayne Amaral and I met with a woman who's beside herself on Fruit Street this morning. You know, she's worried her kids going to get run over. I mean, really, she's afraid to take her her kids to the bus stop because people are just speeding right around that corner. That's the only way to get downtown right now. So, I'm appealing to you as the Ward Two guy. If 7,500 will get this done, please. You don't want to make it this easy. Maybe in 1975 we did, but we don't now. You can't make it this easy to convert all of these retailers into restaurants and have them provide no parking. It's, it's not good. It's not good for the city. So, and, and I you know, try to recognize how much money these restaurateurs put in <coughs> when sea level went in. Um, and again, they didn't have to provide any parking because they're grandfathered. So they wouldn't be subject to it anyway. It went from restaurant to restaurant. Right. I mean, he put in over a million bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, so a hundred thousand dollars to mitigate. I mean, really, it, it, it's it's part of the it's part of their business. And also try to differentiate between the building owners, like NED, which owns most of these properties. It's not our fault that they're taking all of those rents and dipping down to the to the you know they need to readjust that if it's being unfair to their tenants. So you know we can't. If you're cutting a break where you're saying to all, we'll take all the restaurants who we want because we want to encourage you to open and we'll have the public absorb that cost, really what I'm telling you is you're giving a gift to the landowner, which is NED in most cases. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of the economics there. And I, you know, I, I, I beg you, don't do that. Thank you. My, my biggest concern why I voted no was that you have these smaller apostles, and I think there was, in, there was an individual here tonight that didn't speak at public comment, but he is one of those smaller apostles. Um, you know, he may have business plan A and business plan B, and you know, he's on a shoestring budget, and I'm not talking specifically about that individual, but um, the development further down uh, Merrimack Street is a, is a prime example. And there, there is a level of diminishing returns where a um, lot owner or a business owner is going to say, you know, instead of putting in X, I'm going to put in Y and save, save money on, on parking. And maybe it's pound foolish and penny wise, but I only have pennies right now. So this is what I'm going to do. And that's, that's my biggest problem, is that we, I think we're going to stifle growth. And um, I can't get by this. That's Both. insanity. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll stand up here, and I'll, I'll, I'll take off my city councilor hat, and I'll put on my small business owner, particularly a restaurateur of some nature. And I'll tell you that, you know, first of all, you know, most small businesses fail anyway, right, to a certain degree. So when you as a business owner 
step into such an enterprise as opening up a restaurant, you do a pro forma. We all know what pro formas are. And you run the numbers and you figure it out. And if you've only got a small space, if you have, you know, X, you know, 1,100 feet, 1,100 square feet, you can only put 40 tables, uh, not even 40 tables, 20 tables, 10 tables in there. It just isn't going to work. So in the sea level case, again, if it wasn't grandfathered, that would be a prime example. And I think the counselor from War II speaks perfectly about the, the landowner who's digging deep into the pockets of the business owners at the current moment. But as a business owner, coming into town and taking a look at a small space or converting a space into a restaurant, well, you better be sure. Not only, just, just be sure on all accounts. And if another $100,000 is gonna be your stopping point because you have to provide, a, you have to spend $100,000 to provide parking, you shouldn't be there. You really shouldn't. It sounds onerous, it really does. I, can, I, see, I see what you're grappling with and I get it. But it's not. It's, it's just not that bad. I mean, we, you wanna knock the numbers down a little bit? Sure. But if we don't do something about it, we're, we're going to be overwhelmed. We've got to put some controls on this. A smart business owner is going to take a look at all of it. And that's just another small, small piece of, of what it costs to open up. To change a use now. It's just change a use. You go from a retail store to a restaurant. If you're going to go from a retail store to a restaurant, you need a big space. You really do. You need to make it right. I, d I, just, I just don't see it as, as an issue. I think, I think the protection side of it the, the, the upside of it, the betterment for the community, the betterment for the residents, et cetera, et cetera, the betterment for the current, the current business owners, right there. I, I agree. I talk to business owners all the time. Restaurateurs, they're getting killed. Every, tur every turn around, there's a new one, there's a new one, there's a new one. Okay, enough. And I, and I, and I think we're okay with it. I, I, I get your concern. You know what, that you and I agree on this. Business first, but I think we're there. I think it's okay. I really want to to. Yeah, the question I have is, so let's take our restaurant, maybe we're down to $75,000 now. Once they, they pay for those parking spaces, and that is used at the restaurant, does that go forward if another restaurant would move into that structure? Or is that no, new no, business no have to pay? No, 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 no change okay, so, in use. So it goes, it's no change in use. So therefore, it's actually the property owner yeah. that ought to yeah. be paying yes. for the spaces, yes. not the small yeah, business. That's right. Because, that, because the, you know, having the right, all right, to provide 10, 15, 20 spaces, that goes with the property, that enhances the value of that property, of will lead to higher rent, Right, but it's but it's you know it's a market. The property owner has an enhanced asset. Yeah, and uh, that is sellable. Or it's so simple. Uh, That's vulgar. Thank you. Or negotiable. Yeah, right. Negotiable. So yeah. so you you enter into a lease with a with a property owner, and it's going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars for parking. You turn to the property owner and you go, hey, you know, you want me in here? It's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars for parking. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. So it's, it's all part of the spectrum. It's all part of the performance. It's all part of the entering into the business. It's, it's much more complicated than the cut and dry of, oh, it's $100,000 or $75,000. It's, it's, it's expansive. Expansive is what I'm saying in terms of negotiations. So I think we're OK. I really are. We, we really are. Anything else? Well, I, I'll make the motion. Yeah, um, do we have a motion? Can we make a motion to uh, amend further to lower the fee. No, let's try that again. To raise the current fee, which is $5,000 for a public uh, parking garage space, to $7,500 for any public space, whether surface or garage. Simply the motion to amend or motion to approve as amended? Motion to amend. Motion to amend by raising the fee from $5,000 to $7,500. Roll call, Mr. President. Just as a giveaway. It's a freaking giveaway. Does the planning board have the ability to negotiate this fee? No. No, no but in the ordinance, they do have the independent authority to approve shared parking. So, if, again, if there's another, it's pretty flexible. If you can provide the parking on site, 
you can do a deal with a private landowner for a five-year lease. That's it, just five years. You can uh, show that you can share uses with existing parking and, and they, they match, like someone's there during the day and you're there during the night, or you can pay the fee. Uh, one last data point, I looked it up. If you have retail, you need three parking spaces per thousand square feet. If you're a restaurant, you need one per four seats. So the question is, how many seats would you typically get in 1,000 square feet? Please. If you want to do the math. Um, well, you know, maybe 45, 50 seats. Yep. So just so I have to clearly, uh, this is changing from $5,000 to? $7,500 in the second paragraph from the end, page four or five, correct? Yep, that's the only fee. Uh, it's one fee. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All in favor? The amendment. The amendment. Yeah, aye. 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 Opposed? Amendment passes. Motion to approve as amended would be next. I just want to be up front. Um, I just don't think I, I can get over the garage hurdle, so I, I respect the rest of my colleagues and the efforts. But um, this, this goes back to the original discussion about why we were building a garage. So early on it was one thing, then it was the waterfront, and now we're talking here about encouraging development. But as we just talked about, the landowner uh, owns the cost, but they also own the benefit. And by, by building a garage and then sort of gifting it to the surrounding properties immediately around there, one of which is quite notable, it is of deep concern to me, in addition to the fact that we don't know what we don't know about the garage. So um, I, I wanted to you know, be upfront about that for myself personally. So for me, uh, $7,500 is acceptable. And uh, you know, if it works, if it goes with the garage, then it won't go with me. If it goes with it, then so be it. For the discussion? Uh, there was no second. To, there was no second on that. I, I move to as amended. Second. Second by President. Thank you. Well, that's roll call. Right? Roll call. Roll call on the motion uh, to approve is amended to $7,500. Councilor Earls? Yes. Councilor Argeman? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Tonta? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Zeed? No. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? No. Council President O'Brien? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Good job. Any else to go to the audit? Councilor President, the 12th Councilor Jeanette Isabella's birthday is tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> want to end on a good note. Happy birthday. No, that's all right. We want to end on a good note. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We say good note. <laughs> Remember to sign. Megan can do it here. Um, if we're done with the good of the order, I'd move to take the executive uh, committee meeting, whatever it's called, session, uh, second. session off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You need a roll call for that? No. no. Anyone opposed? Go ahead. Move to put it back on the table. Second. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Receiving file. Like receiving file. Uh, oh, receiving file. Yeah, I'd like I'll to do that. Motion to receive file. Yeah, I withdraw my motion. Second it, yeah. Receiving file, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Remember to sign. Thank you.